Hey everybody on YouTube, Carl Alexander here, and in today's video we're going to be going over the Game of Thrones game by Telltale. Let's get into it. Game of Thrones, a Telltale game series, is a point-and-click adventure that was released on December 2nd, 2014 for just about every single modern console, mobile device, and computer. Like most Telltale games, Game of Thrones was released in the form of six episodes from late 2014 until late 2015. The game is a new story in the world of the show Game of Thrones, and is based on the series rather than the novels A Song of Ice and Fire by George R.R. R. Martin. The game features choice-driven gameplay and has many appearances by stars from the television series. What's most immediately noticeable about Game of Thrones is the art style. Though the game's art assets aren't as detailed as most modern games, it has a style all its own. The textures and backdrops look as though they've been painted on the screen, instead of rendered in 3D. The characters' faces and clothing have large color variances that look like oily painting strokes. The style is consistent throughout the game, making the overall presentation blend into the story. The lack of fancy effects or high poly graphics is never distracting, considering how well the world is crafted. Telltale's graphic style opens up the game to almost any platform regardless of its horsepower, making the game more about its story than worrying about which graphics card you need, and for a point and click adventure game, that's a good thing. However, at times the graphics are glitchy and odd. Characters pop in, clothes clip all over the place, and animations have weird speeds, even while the game is storming along at 60 FPS. Considering the entire game is almost always on rails and is set up like a TV show, I think Telltale could have done a better job with quality assurance. The glitches aren't horrible or game-breaking, but they are distracting. The voice acting is fantastic, with only a few cases of poorly recorded lines. The armory. Curry. We practice swords to Curry. Start. What's the master? Don't want anyone you know it. Each character is believable and really fits into the Game of Thrones universe. The actors reprising their roles from the show did their characters justice for the most part. The only performance that doesn't seem to match the show is Ramsay Snow. This is where the game's facial animation system just doesn't match up with the performance. He often looks like a comical villain instead of the terrifying sociopath he is in the show. If I have any complaint about the presentation, it's the facial animation in general. It fails to bring the characters to life. And with such an intensely political story, the emotions just don't push through. Other elements like the soundtrack and episode format are spot on. The game follows the general layout of a Game of Thrones TV episode, with an overview of the previous episode, and an opening that leads to the main title animation, which really cements the feeling of the game as an extension of the show. The soundtrack is spot on, pulling in elements from the show but maintaining its own flavor. The game plays out like any other point and click game. Most of the gameplay consists of making dialogue choices, point and click elements for exploration, and quick time events for combat. The dialogue choices are timed, and silence is always an option in the game. The dialogue choices are usually pretty straightforward, with only a few scenes where I was at a loss for what a particular choice would convey. Depending on the choices you make, the game will let you know what the person thinks of your dialogue choice. Sometimes it simply tells you the character will remember what you said, or it could let you know that the character is impressed by your wording. No matter what you choose, the decisions can come back at you later in the episode. The combat is a series of quick time events, ranging from mashing the Q button to hitting a directional key at the right moment. There are also times where the mouse or joystick is used to strike at a certain opponent or shoot a certain weapon. However, the combat controls are mostly just there to be entertaining. They rarely have an effect on the actual outcome of a situation, and if you do fail a certain event, you will usually be able to retry it. The game has very limited exploration, in the form of walking around and clicking on certain objects to examine them or interact with them. This is mostly used to push the story forward, and there really isn't any exploring in the general sense. After looking at enough objects in an area, many times the story will just continue on. The gameplay of Game of Thrones serves only to move the story forward, which is a hallmark of Telltale games. At times, the combat is a bit annoying because since most of the game you don't need to pay attention to the controls, suddenly needing to mash the right button can be a bit jarring, but overall it works okay. The gameplay is what it needs to be for the style it's going for. The story follows House Forrester, a family created for the game who is loyal to House Stark. If you haven't watched or read Game of Thrones, I would suggest doing so before playing this game. Telltale expects you to have a good knowledge of the TV show and its main characters. The game doesn't walk you through the events and expects you to know many of the tropes and concepts from the series. Anyways, you start the game during the infamous Red Wedding at a camp for House Forrester. You play as Garrett, a steward for the Lord of House Forrester. Shortly after the game begins, the Red Wedding occurs and Walder Frey's men start slaughtering House Forrester soldiers. Your character Garrett escapes the battle and returns to the Forrester city of Ironrath. From there, the game follows several character paths. Besides Garrett, you play as the children of Lord Forrester, including Ethan the New Young Lord, Asher the Lord's son who has been exiled across the Narrow Sea, his daughter Mira, a handmaiden for the future queen Marjorie Tyrell, and Roderick, his eldest son. 
Though the story is well crafted, it suffers from being too close to the series. The entire idea of House Forrester comes off like fan fiction. The family is northern, noble, and honorable. You see the world from the perspective of the former lord's children, who are fighting to save a house that's failing. If you're familiar with the series, and it's pretty obvious this sounds like the Starks, who the Foresters are bannermen to, the game borrows much of its plot from the show, and until the story progresses, it feels like it was lifted straight from the source material. It's not bad, just lazy. The use of already established characters like Jon Snow and Marjorie Tyrell is nice, but again feels like something akin to fan service. They are only there to give the game more credibility, and honestly I think the game would have been better off establishing its own characters without the crutch of the TV series. A few cameos would have brought the game into the continuity of the show without making it feel like a fan fiction wish list of characters they got. As the story progresses, the newer characters begin to take hold of the story and push the TV characters out of the way. Sadly, the first few episodes are slow and contain very little to keep the player's interest, apart from a few good scenes with characters like Tyrion and Jon Snow. As with many Telltale games, the interesting decisions only come down to the last few episodes, as it would be too hard to eliminate an entire character early on if another lived. Overall, the story is decent, with lots of events that feel grounded in the reality of Game of Thrones. Roderick and Mira's stories in particular deliver tough choices that have real outcomes. Many times I questioned my own motives while playing them, and wondered if I was making the right decisions. The political conversations and positioning in King's Landing offered some great choices and opportunities to speak with Tyrion, which was probably the best inclusion from the series. Roderick's story is unique and powerful as a wounded man trying to keep his kingdom from failing, but at the same time trying to keep his own honor. However, the game story puts too much emphasis on tragedy. House Stark is a tragic tale in Game of Thrones, but it showed the brutal conditions of Westeros and paved the way for strong characters to emerge from the hardship. The death and destruction was there to elevate characters and push them. The tragedy of House Forrester comes off as torture porn, as there are so few moments elevating these characters and the ending leaves us with no victories for anyone we care about. Telltale's version of Game of Thrones is certainly faithful to the source material, but in many ways it's too faithful creating a story that pulls too much from what we've already seen. Game of Thrones has a lore with so many possibilities, and the choices the developers made were too safe and many times too grim. The decisions of the game generally come down to one or two options, much like The Walking Dead. But without the emotional story of The Walking Dead, I just didn't feel connected to the characters. The relative lack of choice and unstoppable outcome of The Walking Dead worked because it gave the illusion that our choices had impact on the story and characters. In Game of Thrones, the illusion of choice is just that, an illusion. Many times the outcome seems so predetermined that the impact of the choices fall flat. The story picks up at the end but struggles to get started. Early on it uses shock moments to pull the player in, but the reason we watch Game of Thrones are the characters themselves, not the horrible things that happen to them. Like many Telltale games before, the presentation and gameplay are good but lack polish. The art direction and voice acting are great, but glitches and stiff animation hurt the overall effort. If you like Game of Thrones, this offers a decent story that's mostly lore friendly with some interesting choices and dilemmas. It's not action packed and only lasts about 12 hours, but if you catch it while it's on sale, it's worth trying out. But for the retail price of $30, it's hard to justify for what you get, which is essentially an extremely well made piece of fan fiction. Okay everybody, that was my video for this week. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, I think you know what to do. Uh, leave me a comment in the comment section and uh, hit that subscribe button uh, if you want to see more videos like this one in the future. Uh, I should have more Let's Plays coming up soon and more reviews. Uh, just for anybody that's been watching my channel, I know I haven't done a review in a few weeks and this is the first one I've done in a while. That was because I got the flu about two weeks ago uh, and it really just you know, put me out. I couldn't really do anything, couldn't play any games. So glad to be back, healthy again, making more reviews. So hopefully you stick with it. I'll see you next time.